The following interview was conducted with Charles J. Leslie, Director of Special Projects for Purdue University, now retired, uh, for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Thursday, January 21st, 2010, at his residence in Muncie, Indiana. Good afternoon, Mr. Leslie, and welcome to the Oral History and to Purdue again. Well, thank you very much. Okay, let's start by, if you'll tell us where, you were, where and when you were born and your parents and siblings in early years. Okay, well, I was born in Muncie, Indiana in, uh, on uh, December the 30th, 1932. My parents were George Leslie and Lida Smith Leslie. Um, I moved around a little bit. My family moved around a little bit when I was young and uh, uh, lived for, some, for a time in uh, Grant County and uh, for a time in Marion, Indiana. Uh, and then moved to uh, Hartford City, Indiana. My father worked for the, uh, what was then, uh, Indiana General Service, the electric company. It's now uh, part of electric, uh, American Electric Power. Uh, and they moved him around a little bit in this area of uh, East Central Indiana. Um, we moved to Hartford City in, uh, I think, 1939, 1938. Mm. And uh, that's where I received my education. We lived there for several years. I went to elementary school, graduated from Hartford City High School mm -hmm. in 1951, and uh, enrolled then in Ball State Teachers College in neighboring Muncie. That's now, of course, Ball State University. I attended there for two years and uh, took the two journalism courses that were offered and decided I needed more journalism education. And so I then went to Indiana University in Bloomington and uh, graduated in 1955 with a bachelor's degree in majoring in journalism. Okay. Uh, I was then drafted and uh, served for two years. Uh, 1955 through 1957 in the United States Army. Um, I was, uh, uh, my first assignment after I finished training in the States was in Korea. In, uh, uh, I was a clerk in the Adjutant General's office of the 7th Infantry Division in Korea. And uh, subsequently, uh, because uh, uh, some officials, some officers, uh, found out that I had a degree in journalism. I uh, was selected to be the editor of the 7th Infantry Division newspaper, weekly newspaper, the Bayonet. And this was uh, printed in Tokyo, so I uh, was assigned on temporary duty to Pacific Stars and Stripes, the uh, Armed Forces newspaper, which was printed in Tokyo. and. That's also where the bayonet was uh, printed, so I put the paper together over there at the uh, uh, Stars and Stripes. And um, while I was in Tokyo, um, I was able to do some uh, sightseeing and uh, take in a uh, few uh, of the cultural uh, things in Japan that Tokyo had to offer. It was the largest city in the world and uh, certainly very impressive to uh, a young man who came from a uh, rural and small-time background, as I did. Uh, I, uh, on discharge from the Army, I then became a reporter for the Elkhart Truth in Elkhart, Indiana, and uh, worked there at, uh, for about uh, two and a half years, and then worked for the uh, Indiana Farm Bureau Co-op in Indianapolis uh, as publicity manager and also as associate editor of the Farm News. The Farm News was kind of an interesting publication. It was um, published, uh, it was a membership newspaper for uh, uh, mo uh, members of county Farm Bureau co-ops, uh, which were widespread throughout Indiana at that time. And uh, it was published in county editions. Most of the counties that had a co-op also had a local edition of the Farm News. There was a, a local editor who was responsible for the content of uh, four pages of the newspaper and then as associate editor I was responsible for the content of the other four pages of the paper which uh, came out monthly and uh, I got around over the state of Indiana quite a bit uh, uh, training editors and working with local editors of the farm news and uh, 
also uh, because of the uh, widespread uh, installations that Farm Bureau Co-op had, uh, petroleum refinery, a feed mill, uh, fer fertilizer plants. Uh, I traveled to these pretty extensively, so I got to know the state pretty well. Mm -hmm. And uh, in process, I got to uh, know some of the people in the School of Agriculture at Purdue. So this has uh, actually led to my uh, joining the staff uh, at Purdue in 1969 as a staff writer in University News Service and uh, then remained at Purdue uh, in various uh, capacities with the news service and later with uh, university, university relations uh, for the next uh, approximately 23 years. Good. Uh, I'm going to couple a couple things I want to ask. I want to jump back a little bit to college. Can you uh, tell us when you were in college, did you, you lived on campus, I gather, in Bloomington? Uh, did you live on campus when you were finishing up, when you went down to IU? Uh, I lived actually, uh, yes, I lived on campus okay. uh, for my first year there. Uh -huh. I lived in West Hall, which is a dormitory. Uh -huh. And uh, the second year, I lived in a, in a private home. A uh, family uh, lived, who lived near the campus uh, had several students living upstairs in their big old house. Sure. And uh, this was. Uh, this is where I uh, lived my the, my senior year. Okay. Were there any student uh, organizations that you participated in while you were down there? Yes, I was um, uh, worked for the Indiana Daily Student, the student daily newspaper. Okay. Uh, both the uh, years that I was there, uh, uh, I was a um, reporter, a copy editor, and uh, eventually became the sports editor of Indiana Daily Student. So you got to go to all the, uh, did you go to both football and basketball? I covered some uh, football. I uh -huh. covered, um, did not directly cover basketball. Uh, but, yeah, I, I got to quite a few of the athletic sure. events. Uh, Good. That included a trip up to Purdue. Did you went for reporting? Did you come up here when we played um, basketball? <laughs> no, I <laughs> no did road not, trips, huh? <laughs> did not get to uh, take any great trips like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Um, the Indiana. I'm thinking of researchers. The Indiana Farm Bureau Cooperative Association. Could you just make a comment? What type of association that was? Yes, probably first I should distinguish the Farm Bureau Co-op from its uh, near relative. Uh, the Indiana Farm Bureau, which is Good. a membership organization. Good. Also, there's a Farm Bureau Insurance, which is another another one. Uh, That's right. Another member of the Farm Bureau family. The okay. Farm Bureau Co-op is actually the um, farmers' um, marketing and supply organization, um, doing at that time uh, multi-million-dollar business in uh, marketing grain throughout the world. Uh, that's raised, that was raised on Indiana farms and also providing farm supplies at, uh, at very competitive prices, uh, uh, diesel fuel, gasoline, uh, other needs for farm machinery, fertilizer, farm chemicals, uh, just about everything that a uh, farmer would need. Mm -hmm. And the farmer would go to, went to the co-op to get these? Correct. Okay, okay. All right. Uh, now, is, then, th is that different than the far the farm Indiana Farm Bureau or something yeah, different? So okay. I think the Farm Bureau uh, is uh, incidentally uh, there. There are still a few Farm Bureau co-ops in Indiana, but most of them uh, are operating under different names now because of mergers that have taken place. I see. Okay. So Good you, point. Yeah, there, there, uh, there used when I was working there. There was, uh, there were 82 Farm Bureau co-ops uh, serving the 92 Indiana counties. Now, I don't know what the number would be, but sure. uh, actual Farm Bureau co-ops it would be quite a bit uh, smaller than that. Than that, okay, all right. Um, the Hoosier farmer uh, was that distribution? Did you just limit it only to distribution in within the state of Indiana? Okay. Or? I did not work for the uh, oh, okay. Hoosier Farmer because it was a publication of the Farm Bureau. Okay. Uh, Different, I see. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the Farm News, which I was the associate sure. editor of, was just distribu distributed in uh, Indiana counties. Okay. Is that still published today? Uh, no, it's not. It oh, was okay. uh, discontinued a few years ago. Oh, okay. All righty. Um, now, the University News Service, when you came, were you located down in, would that have been what's down South Campus Courts? Yes, we were located in South Campus Courts, okay. Building D. 
Okay. Uh -huh. uh, tell us a little bit about a little more in detail what some of your responsibilities and also when how that when you became associate director before you moved on to special projects. Okay. Um, well, when I started, um, I was assigned to a beat. Uh, I was pretty much a reporter mm -hmm. uh, as a staff writer, my, and uh, I covered uh, some uh, various assignments. Uh, my main assignment was the School of Humanities, Social Science, and Education, okay. and all, all the various departments that that covered. Mm -hmm. um, I was also, uh, one of my responsibilities uh, early on was Purdue Libraries. Okay. And, uh, I remember the uh, director at that time, uh, Professor uh, John Moriarty. Right. And um, he's a very, very fine man. I always enjoyed uh, sure. working with him very much. Right. And uh, yes, go ahead. Uh, and then Mr. Dagne Dagnese, Joe Dagnese, came after him. Did you still have the libraries? Did you inter Did you work with Mr. Dagnese? A he little bit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Of course. The libraries, there were more of them uh, than there are today because they've done some, you know, downsizing or consolidation of some of the libraries now. Like uh, Hissey is still exists, but there used to be an education library at one time over in the education building years ago. <laughs> Would, uh, when you were the associate director, did that uh, some of the responsibilities of that position, were you still doing reporting and on a beat, or were some other things involved? I was doing some uh, reporting, but also some administrative work uh, uh, at that time I was uh, actually you might say I was like a, a city editor of a newspaper because the report the staff writers then at that time reported to me and uh -huh. I worked with them to make assignments and to edit their copy and right like this huh okay now were these for university publications these were not for university oh. publications okay. these were, were primarily for news releases okay okay yeah, we were the publicity guys. Okay, all right. Did you have any? What about the Journal Courier? They may have used you as probably used the universe, used your unit as a source for material, but what or did they uh, sort of work together to some extent? Yes, mm -hmm. uh, we particularly would work with them on the annual uh, Purdue issue of the Journal Courier. I don't know if they're still doing that. But, okay. Uh, at that time, we always had an annual issue uh, around the in fall, around the beginning of class. Sure, would right. be devoted strictly to Purdue. Right. But uh, we worked with all kinds of uh, news media uh, all over the country. And uh, uh, these are some of the things I really remember doing. Uh, that were very significant when we were able to place items about Purdue in, say, in the New York Times or Time Magazine sure. or uh, publications like this. And uh, we also um, branched out to the electronic media and uh, uh, were, had a, a person on staff who uh, particularly specialized in these areas, in the broadcast areas. Okay, okay. And how did the uh, impact of technology that, uh, that change the public, the Printing and publication, et cetera? The impact <laughs> of uh, <laughs> technology was very uh, profound. And, and noticed. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah. um, the, uh, the nature of the work really did, uh, did change over uh -huh. the years. And at about the time when I left the news service and uh, became special director, uh, director of special projects, was uh, the time when they really where this uh, change was really taking effect when it was uh, much more uh, computer and internet based than it had been before. Sure. So actually, <laughs> I'm not a good person to uh, talk to you about that because uh, most of those changes uh, took place after I was uh, yeah. doing other things. But, but the time that I was, uh, and uh, I didn't do any broadcasting myself, uh -huh. or do anything specifically for broadcasting, I strictly worked uh, with the print media, and uh, so, um, if I might, I would like to mention some of the things sure, that I think ahead. were particularly noticeable that we did at that time. Just to please do, I would appreciate shoot. that. Okay, well, I uh, one of the things that uh, one of the people that I worked with who was doing very significant work was uh, Professor Robert Myers, who was a uh, uh, in the Department of Psychology and was. Uh, working particularly with uh, uh, the, in the area of alcoholism. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dr. Myers was a uh, 
I, I guess you would say he was a physiological psychologist because he was working uh, directly with the effect of uh, different things on the brains of experimental animals, rats and other animals. Sure. This is how he uh, actually studied um, alcoholism by actually uh, introducing uh, little amounts of alcohol into the uh, brains of the animals and he was able to observe the changes that uh, alcohol addiction uh, causes in mm -hmm. animals and also he was able to uh, reverse the effects of, of alcohol on, uh, on the animal's brains. Now, this was a pretty significant uh, yeah. research at that time. It was covered by Time Magazine, Wall Street Journal, and uh, others. Mm -hmm. And um, another faculty member that I had the uh, pleasure of working with uh, was uh, Professor Robert Ringel who uh, subsequently became uh, dean of uh, HSSE, and then after that uh, eventually was uh, executive vice president of the university. But mm -hmm. At that time, he was uh, doing research, very interesting research, on uh, stuttering. Oh, okay. He was a uh, speech, uh, spe uh, specialist in speech, and uh, his work was uh, covered for us uh, pretty extensively by Newsweek magazine, and uh, along with the information that we provided in the interview that, uh, with uh, Professor Ringel that we set up, they um, asked us to provide them with a, uh, with a picture of him actually working with a young child. And uh, just on the spur of the moment, uh, we needed a model uh, for, to uh, be in the picture with Dr. Ringel, and it happened to be my son, who was handy at the time, a three-year-old. Oh, how nice. Yeah, and, uh, and he's... He's uh, never had any trouble with his speech at all at that time or since. But, but he was but, available. But he was available, <laughs> so he was the one whose picture appeared in Newsweek magazine. Oh. Um, I bet he looks back on that. He probably got a lot. Did you get a good, a good frame copy of that, too? Well, uh, it's, it's kind of interesting because just a few weeks ago, uh, his name is Joe. Okay. Uh, his nickname is Joe. And... Uh, just a few weeks ago, one of the news magazines, either Time or Newsweek, had a cover story on the Vice President uh, Joe Biden. And the, the headline there on the cover was something uh, like, uh, what's going on now, Joe, or something like this. And some of his uh, co-workers uh, clipped this off and put his picture in place of the Vice President <laughs> on the cover. And <laughs> so he said, well... <laughs> <laughs> the, the last time I was in Newsweek, it was a little different. So uh, he had me send him a copy of the magazine that I'd said, so he said I had saved so he could show his coworkers. But that wasn't the first time he'd been in Newsweek. <laughs> or and now he's on the cover. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's on the cover now. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. And, uh, 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 I was going to mention a couple more sure, uh, go ahead. Please uh, faculty do. members that I had the uh, honor to work with. Uh, I recall. Um, Professor Reinhard Schumann, who is a professor of, uh, of engineering, and uh, uh, he developed a method uh, that would enable power plants and other large-scale users to burn coal uh, with much less pollution than, uh, than, uh, is, than they were doing it then. And uh, this was another very interesting process that, uh, that the uh, national news media found to be very interesting and significant. And I don't know, uh, I haven't been in touch with him, uh, of course, for a long time, and I don't know if this uh, process uh, was ever developed commercially, but I know at the time it was felt to be, uh, to be very promising. Mm -hmm. And another uh, branch of research that I was able to publicize was the work of uh, Professor George Sow, that is uh, spelled T-S-A-O, uh -huh. he's professor of engineering, and uh, he was working at a uh, very early time on uh, converting our farm crops and even uh, other uh, waste uh, vegetable material into alcohol fuel. And, of course, this, is, uh, this has been very widely used, very widely adopted, and uh, um, so that was a very significant thing that I had to... Uh, pleasure of working on. Um, As, and it started here at Purdue. Yes, he was right. one of the very early researchers to, uh, to be looking at this area and uh, did really some pioneering work in the uh, schools right. of engineering and agriculture. Right, yeah, good. Okay, any others that uh, you recall? Oh, um, 
might come to your mind? Well, one thing that I might mention uh, is that uh, at one time the School of Aeronautics and Astronautics had a master's degree program, which was uh, which they developed in uh, cooperation with the Air Force, and this was uh, specifically uh, designed for the uh, Air Force uh, pilots who aspired to be astronauts. Oh, okay. And uh, so we had quite a few uh, of them on campus as uh, graduate students for a few years that this program operated, and I got to know several of them. And, uh, they did uh, later participate, uh, many of them, in uh, space shuttle missions. Uh, I came along a little bit later than uh, the Apollo program, sure. and so I never, although I did exchange some uh, letters with Neil Armstrong for a piece that I wrote for a Purdue publication, uh, I never met him personally. Mm -hmm. But uh, some of the later astronauts who came along, I did uh, have an opportunity to meet. and. Uh, a very interesting group of people. They're, yeah, how nice. They're not the ordinary kind of people that uh, that you might uh, that right. you might meet uh, yeah. in the course of a day. Right. Very. I should tell you that um, Neil Armstrong's papers. He has given his papers to the archives and special collections, and we have some, and there will be more to come. So that's nice. Well, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Building up our university, our air, our uh, and the archives in the area of uh, the pilots and airlines, et cetera. So that's kind of nice. Uh -huh. um, have you, uh, may I ask, have yeah. you been in, ch in touch with Gene Cernan? Um, Gene Cernan is also giving his papers, great, and uh, great. Uh, so they're, they're coming too. So this is this is nice. Of course, we have the Amelia Earhart collection, which is which is the unique one and one one of its kind in the country. We got that. Uh, some all together, so that's pretty good. The uh, I was going to ask you, in university relations. What sort of pro uh, director of special projects could you, for researchers, could expand a little bit on that? What that entailed? Well, <laughs> uh, well, you know, one always has special projects, right? We always have them at home too. <laughs> we never well, get to them. <laughs> well, you know, uh, you know my my boss at that time, Joe Bennett. Oh, okay. And essentially, what that. <laughs> what that boiled down to uh, is that uh, when something would come along that Joe didn't want to handle himself, he would give it to me. So that's what special projects were. Okay, all right. Okay, so you really attacked across interdisciplinary might be another term for it. You know, absolutely. You yeah, yes, you cross over. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, it, it did involve some advertising and some publicity and some publications. Uh, sure. Uh, I did a little research for um, uh, presidential speeches, uh -huh. and uh, it was just, uh, I think the most notable thing, or the most, I should say the most noticeable thing that I did as director of special projects uh, may still be in, in, in existence, because uh, I was the one who did the work uh, that enabled Purdue to have that billboard on highway, or Interstate 69. Uh, south of Lafayette, and you may have noticed that sometime. Oh, okay. I I don't remember now what the copy on that said, but uh, the idea was uh, welcome to Purdue Country or something like that. Sure, sure. Oh, that's and, great. Uh, I'll think so I'll that, think of you next time I see it. Okay. Well, that <laughs> uh, that does that that really was more complicated than you might think because um, the state highway department under federal law. Uh, is not supposed to authorize any billboards along the highway. And so it did take a certain amount of work with them and with others to uh, find a way that Purdue could have a billboard, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, because of, of the desire to have highway beautification and not have our interstates cluttered up with a lot of advertising. Right. It's, it's really not easy to get a billboard unless you can grandfather it. In other words, if a billboard was there before the law was passed, you can put new, new information on it. But sure. To get a new sign is very difficult. Yeah. So but you, you, sort of, you made it anyway. I Don't persevered. You? I yeah. really did have to spend a lot of time and work right. over a period of time to, uh, to, to finally get figure it. out what to do, what, how to do it, and finally get, uh, get permission and get it in place. And we also had to find out, a, find a site for it, right? And eventually, uh, working with the school of agriculture, I was able to get permission to put one on one of uh, 
produce experimental uh, farms. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> so, anyway, that That's that I remember because it was it turned out to be. It sounds so easy, but it turned out to sure. be so complex and time consuming. Oh yeah, but it but it it worked out all right. Don't you remember the days when they used to have the Burma shave, you know, along the rows? Oh yeah, those were kind of, those were kind of fun. Yeah, I'm sure there are a lot of people that remember those. Uh huh. <laughs> oh, um, Chauncey Village, how that has that changed? That changed quite a, uh, has changed pretty much since you've been here. I'm, I'm sorry. What? Chauncey Village, you know, that sort of changed, or was oh, it pretty gosh. much? Well, yeah. Since I really can't uh, speak to that because I've been to. Per uh, produce so seldom. Uh, but you know the levee hit, well you know like Sears has moved, the levee has changed a lot. That intersection down there, you know at the foot of State Street. Yeah. Uh -huh. right. So that's what I'm saying, that that whole area and of course the village there's a lot more shops and things of that sort than years ago. A lot, lot uh, that, that's changed a little bit I think too. Uh, faculty fellow, were you a fact fellow at any time? Mr. No I Lewis? was oh. not. Okay. I uh, did. Um, go ahead. Um, I did for a time uh, do some tutoring uh, of uh, journalism students. Okay. You know, I think I can't remember the name of the uh, faculty member who was in charge of that tutoring program, uh -huh. but uh, she was um, uh, very kindly allowed me to, to join. And then one of the journalism professors uh, particularly like for me to tutor her students. And I can't remember her name, but sure. I, she referred a lot of students to me. And I, I really found that uh, to be a very enjoyable oh, yeah, uh, I would think so. work. And another thing that uh, I enjoyed doing was uh, working with our interns because the Department of Communication would um, like to place a student with us uh, from time to time to intern with us. That mm -hmm. was a good part of their education. These were, these were, uh, without exception, very bright students that were just a joy to work with. Right, yeah. And it's also nice to follow their path afterwards. Sometimes you keep in touch that way, too. Well, one of them uh, did keep in touch with me for a long time, uh -huh. in fact, yeah, uh, through her getting married and having a couple of children. And <laughs> I haven't heard from her just uh, in sure. the last few years, but. Uh, we were, at, uh, my wife and I were in Evansville a few years ago and got to visit her and her, her family and their home. Oh, that's, that's, that's very, very nice. nice. Yeah, yeah. Very. I was going to, um, Chuck, I was going to ask you, when the University News Service, was was it Mr. Whalen? Was he the head at that time? or? No, he was oh. not. He was, okay. uh, Bill Whalen um, was uh, director of the Office of Publication. Oh, okay, okay. And Bob Topping was the director of the News Service okay. at the time okay. I came. Okay, fine. And you know that Mr. Topping has passed away. Yes, I yeah. did know that. Yeah, right. Okay. I was able to interview him before, you know, he became, before he passed away, so I, for our, the oral history program, so that was kind of nice. Yeah, because he really uh, was, uh, was with Purdue through a very long period sure. when there was a lot of development. I'll tell you a little incident that involves him. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> people, I think, sometimes... Uh, particularly faculty members don't quite know what University News Service does or what it did at that time. Sure. And, uh, and uh, they may think that we're a branch of the media or... Uh, <laughs> or something. Or something. <laughs> or not quite. Something newsy. Yeah. Or, and uh, actually, um, and I've heard this uh, from other people subsequently to finding this out for myself. Uh -huh. Actually, it's in the process of making public announcements of uh, policies and decisions and uh, Board of Trustees actions and so forth that actually the specifics of the, the policy get worked out. Mm -hmm. And this may sound very strange to some people, but really until you put this into the kind of language that you can uh, released to the news media and expect people to uh, to read or to have to grasp what you've got. You, you don't really know what the specifics are going to be. And I remember uh, one time in particular, the board of trustees uh, had taken a particular action, and I was writing a story about this. And um, I I was at a kind of a difficult point, and I said to Bob, uh, "Well." 
what is the board's policy in this area? And he said, you go ahead and write your story, and then we'll know what the board's policy is. And <laughs> this sounds strange, but that's really the way it works out many times. Mm. But we have to actually put it into words. Even the president isn't uh, too precise on just what this policy is going to mean. Sure. That's kind of hard to put it in so that the layman can understand it. That's correct. And, and implement it. Until you do that, you really haven't hammered out the details of this as you must do. That's right, yeah. And uh, I, uh, in a book that she wrote after she uh, had uh, left the, the uh, administration, Peggy Noonan, who was an assistant uh, speechwriter and a publicist for President Reagan, said pretty much the same thing. Hmm. Until it came to her, and she had to actually put it into plain English, uh, the president and all of his assistants really uh, couldn't articulate the specifics of a policy. Right, right. Putting in writing and verbalizing are two different things. That's right, right. yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, any awards that uh, you recall that you received that you'd like to comment on? Um, I uh, guess the only thing that, well, I don't, I don't know that I ever individually received some awards. We did have, we did, our office did get uh, recognition well, that's good. Uh, quite often from, uh, oh, let's see, what did they call it? The, I think it was called the American College Public Relations Association or something like this. Uh -huh. They subsequently merged with the National Alumni Council, and it became the Council for the Advancement and Support of Education. Okay. But we did receive recognition uh, from them um, several times for things that we had done. Had done. And uh, as I say, these were not individual awards for me. Right. These were recognized. But you all shared in the award. Yes, every, these were things sure. that we had all worked on. And, sure. and uh, the thing that, uh, the one distinction I guess that I could claim uh, was that uh, I did do quite a bit of, uh, of work with uh, various uh, professors in science engineering. And uh, I did become a member of the National Association of Science Writers. Okay, and, well, good. Uh, that's so very that, nice. Yeah, I uh, uh, I still hear a uh, couple of the people that I met through that organization. I hear them on NPR now. Oh, how nice! Uh, from time to time, and uh, so they're they're still in the business. Right. They keep it's good. You can keep in contact. Yeah. Right. Except I'm not really doing any no. work in that area. Now. <laughs> but you're but, keeping abreast of what's go what they're doing. That's right. Which is yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah. What about re uh, now retirement activities? Uh, well, before we go to that, oh, could sure, I mention go ahead. something else? Go ahead. It, Please. I think uh, uh, shortly after uh, I joined the uh, new service, President Hubday retired, uh -huh. and uh, as you may know, uh, there was a retirement uh, program for him in Indianapolis, and uh, President Nixon attended that program. And because uh, I was a very low staff member on the totem pole at that time, and I didn't really have any uh, significant part in arranging uh, the visit or the details of that or uh, the program for President Hovde. But at the time, at the evening of the program, I did uh, go to Indianapolis, and I had a very minor uh, kind of a gopher role uh -huh. uh, in that program and uh, got to... Uh, experience what a presidential visit means in a, in a way and uh, and subsequently lots of bells and whistles well yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, subsequently then uh, years later uh, President Ronald Reagan uh, visited our campus sure. I had I did have a more significant role in uh, preparation for his visit in fact I'm holding in my hand now a little badge that I received, and it says, I, re I survived Ronald Reagan's visit to Purdue, April 9th, 1987. And uh, the thing, well, I remember it was, uh, it was uh, a very good program that, uh, that we had for him, and uh, he was able to make a speech in uh, Mackey Arena, and uh, I had a, a very nice seat uh, to uh, hear what he had to say. Um, but the, the thing, one of the things that I remember most about that was the contrast between the people that I met uh, 
who are on President Nixon's staff and the people that I met on President Reagan's staff uh -huh. because when I heard that uh, President Reagan might be visiting Purdue, I kind of dreaded it because uh, the Nixon people were so uh, arrogant and demanding and even rude. Hmm. And I didn't look forward to this, but um, the people who worked for Ronald Reagan were uh, as different as night and day. They were, uh, for the most part, easygoing, uh, very cooperative people, just pleasant to work with. Mm -hmm. uh, I was very thankful for that. Yes. Did you um, did you see any? He was around that day, but you just were sort of present at the presentation, the the speech in Mackey. That's right. Okay. Uh, I didn't. I didn't okay. attend any of those. Because he visited some other spots. Yes, you know, he did. Sure. But I didn't get to attend any of those. Right. But uh, and I remember at Mackey, they had a good turnout. Oh yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, okay. Um, can we talk? Make a comment about retirement. How? Um, what kind of activities you've been doing? Well, uh, I really uh, look forward to, to retirement because uh -huh. I thought that it would give me some time and some freedom to do some things that I hadn't been able to do before, but um, I really didn't, uh, <laughs> I tried a lot of things and some of them just didn't work, which sure. I, I won't bring any of, of those things up. <laughs> Had you decided to, re to relocate from Lafayette, though? Was that, well, that part was of your a, plan? Yeah, that okay. was pretty much a family de decision. Okay. Because um, my dad at that time was very ill, and uh, uh, my mother was uh, here living on the farm where uh, my wife and I live now, and uh, she was having an increasingly tough time trying to take care of him. He had Alzheimer's, and uh, uh, it was just an awful lot of work for her to try to keep up with running the farm. And uh, uh, I just, my wife and I just decided, my wife had family ties in this area too and we just decided that the best thing for us to do would be to move here sure and we could uh, take care of my uh, mother's needs that way and uh, the other thing to do would of course be ask a lady in her 80s uh, to come and move to Lafayette and leave behind her relatives and friends here in this area and uh, we didn't feel that would be a very desirable thing. It would be better for us to go where she was. Sure. Okay. So that's why we located in this area. Okay. And uh, um, it was a good decision. Uh, it, uh, I think, uh, took a, a real, was a real relief to my mother to have uh, us right handy here where we could uh, be with her every day. Sure. And uh, uh, this is a, an interesting community. It's a lot different from Lafayette. <laughs> Uh, and uh, we've enjoyed our time here. We mm -hmm. have really put down roots here. Uh, we've become very active in the First Presbyterian Church, and uh, uh, the, the main activity that I have uh, embraced since I retired, and I would have been astonished if anybody told me this, that I would do this uh, before I retired, is uh, uh, I began to sing with a church choir here, and I'd never really done any singing before, had mm -hmm. a little musical background, and I found out that I really enjoy singing very much, so I've kind of branched out from there, and uh, I sing quite a bit now uh, in venues other than the church and occasionally get paid for it, and uh, I've also found that I enjoy being in uh, the amateur theater productions here. Well, good for you, Chuck. That's great. And uh, I've been in a number of uh, musicals uh, here at Purdue and uh, put on by Muncie Civic Theater. Mm -hmm. And uh, I even a few years ago got nominated for Best Actor Award. I didn't win it, but I thought that very flattering to be nominated. It certainly even. is. <laughs> and, uh, right now I'm also uh, active in another theater group called Third Age Theater, which is an amateur group that's open to people uh, 55 years old and, and older. Mm -hmm. And uh, we book shows whenever we can. We get together once a week for a rehearsal, and we do shows for uh, about any organization that will have us. And uh, we have a lot of fun with this. And uh, I'm looking forward to doing a couple of shows with Third Age Theater. We've got a couple of bookings for February, so we're in process of putting together a, a new show that's kind of a that will be kind of a Valentine's uh, romantic music kind of thing. And uh, so, uh, 
music and theater have uh, we've been a, a big, very large interest. So very for me. good. Uh, I forgot. I was asking you, family. Do you have uh, do, do you have children as well? Yeah. Did they uh, did they, any of them come to Purdue or? Uh, we have a daughter, Anne, uh -huh. who uh, graduated from Hanover College, and her uh, future plans were kind of uncertain, so she did enroll, enroll at Purdue mm -hmm. Graduate School, and uh, she uh, studied at Purdue for a year, and uh, then uh, along the way decided that uh, her calling would be in uh, college student uh, administration, so she uh, found a one-year uh, master's degree program at Eastern Illinois, and so she went to Eastern Illinois and finished that program. and. Uh, she has worked in that area of uh, she worked in that area of college student administration for a while. She was on the staff at Texas A and M for a year, mm -hmm. and then she went to Grand Valley State University in Michigan and uh, was there for several years working in the student life area. And for the last several years, she has been the director of uh, the alumni association of Hanover, Hanover College. Oh, very nice. And uh, good. Tomorrow, tomorrow, if it's not too icy, we're going to. Uh, go down and spend a couple of days with her and her family. That'll be the uh, fourth birthday of our uh, granddaughter. And Anna and her husband also have a, uh, a son, and uh, he is eight years old. And we all, uh, Maxine and I also have a son, Joe. I mentioned before, Joe is a graduate of Rose Holman, a civil engineer, and he's working for a steel company in the Detroit area at this time. Mm-hmm. Well, they're not, they're sort of in the vicinity, they're in the Midwest, so that's, that's pretty nice. Yeah, not, uh, not too Joe far. incidentally also has a son and uh -huh. a daughter. Okay. Well, we have four grandchildren in all. Oh, that's very nice. That's, that's a fun thing. What about uh, Purdue tradition? Do you have a Purdue tradition that comes to mind? Um, <laughs> well, um, or you can do that, or how about an outstanding event? Well, um, right now the outstanding event is that uh, through our son, we were able, Maxine and I were able to uh, get tickets and attend the Purdue Michigan game at uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan this past season. And the Boy, team, that was a, you won't forget that one. Absolutely. That was, that <laughs> was so tremendous to be uh, sitting among all those Michigan fans and uh, <laughs> see, see the Boilermakers uh, pull off that upset. That was, that, oh, that was so great. That's awesome. I'd love to have been there. <laughs> uh, any, in closing, I'll leave it up to you. Uh, anything that I uh, didn't ask that, uh, or something that you want to further make a comment on? Okay, well, let me go down. I made a little list of things that I okay, was going to talk ahead. about. Let me go run down this real quick. I think that we uh, got to cover about everything on my list. And uh, so uh, I uh, guess that I really don't have anything to add. So we're pretty well covered, huh? I think we're pretty well finished. Okay. Yeah. All righty. Chuck, I want to thank you very much, and I'm going to log off, and I'm going to make another comment with not on the recorder, okay? All right. Okay. All right.